Welcome to Kingston upon Hull. Filled with people, some shops, and okay, I'll be honest, in my experience, the overall reputation of Hull isn't exactly the highest. Check the internet and you'll find stories of it being the worst performing in the country when it comes to education, constantly being described as not so positive descriptions, ranking amongst the worst cities to live in Britain, and even being called the worst place in the world in some instances. So okay, maybe this city has a few shortcomings, but is one of those shortcomings creativity? As a media student myself, I wanted to know if this city and the county of Yorkshire as a whole was a waste of time for the artists in my generation. So I sat down with the only people I could think of, young creators and artists who have spent their whole lives in this area to hear their stories and see what the truth really was. Hello Sam. Hello, Will. <laughs> you can stop laughing there. You can laugh if you're right. Well, you to be comfortable. I am. Yeah. Oh, to make myself look more comfortable, I'll cross my legs. So I am an aspiring voice actor. And I'm a musician, so I can songwriter and a guitarist. And then I take film, so I, um, I do scores for films sometimes as well. I'm interested in filmmaking. Ideally, in the future, directing, I think. But at the minute, I'm just kind of testing out and seeing what I like doing. I do do a lot of stuff on YouTube, so just like commentary videos and that. I do a lot of musical theatre, but I never upload any of it because I just think that my performance is not good enough yet. 2012, I had like, you know, like the Lego advent calendars. I started using it as like a stop motion thing. And there was like a little fight, I think, between one of the droids and the stormtrooper. And then I think a caption that I put on it was, everyone's dead, <laughs> and then it ended. So you edited it together? So. Yeah. I wrote a really bad Arctic Monkeys ripoff song once. I was quite proud at the time, but in retrospect, it is, it's really just Arctic Monkeys ripoff song. It sounds like really like the first album, Arctic Monkeys, because I'm from a similar area, so that was like a big inspiration. How old were you when you first started doing that stuff? About 15. I do kind of like social media and community management for two voice actresses. That really allows me to get creative in terms of designing posters and that kind of thing. What's the thing that you've made that you're proudest of, or the, the something that you've been a part of which you're proudest of? We need to talk with two people. One of them's kind of quite emotionally closed off. They kind of go into their own head and imagine different scenarios in which the conversation could start to play out. And the last crisp is two students have been like working all night. And they, they have one bag of crisps between them and they have the last crisp. There's only one left. That's the one that I did um, assistant directing for. I wrote quite a good song of the year called Great. There's a, um, like a road in Doncaster called Great Yorkshire Way and it led to the airport. The concept was like, oh, Great Yorkshire Way represents like, like leaving a place. And I was really proud of that, but in, again, looking back on it, it was five minutes, had no chorus. It was in like a really weird guitar tuning, so I think it was cool. People say it made them cry, but I'm not sure that, that was the quality of the song or the length of it. There's this concept of the starving artist. Very creative, but doesn't have the financial income to make that creativity work. It would also be nice to have that sort of sense of financial security. If you get into music or you get into like filmmaking, like one specific person's like art, I think you naturally start copying them. And then, I can't remember who said it, but I've read an interview before, like you try to copy someone and when you fail at copying them, that's when you create something unique. I mean, I, I did that. Oh, yeah, I think a lot of people do. I look back and I'm like, I'm just copying Markiplier. <laughs> if I feel the inspiration to do it, I write a lot of poetry. I've been published for that. I think it's young writers something, and they like send things out to schools and they're like, write this poem with this brief. I wrote it about specifically at the time counselling because I just started getting through counselling. I sent that in, and then they're like, you're gonna be published. How old are you? Oh, about like. 13? There are no small parts, only small players, I believe is the saying. Like, it's what you put into it. Even just a small role is a lovely thing to be able to do in a project. I started playing guitar and I enjoyed playing guitar. And I think the natural next step from learning other people's songs was learning your own. And I think the natural next step from writing your own songs and getting recorded, then that's performing them live, getting an album. I think you kind of just take it a step at a time, really. Success in itself would just be making something that people enjoy, because that's what I want to do at the end of the day. To just get to a point where people know you because of the good work that you do. Hull has been praised for its creativity for years, being described as a city with the genius gene back in 99, due to the sheer amount of writers coming from the area. And this is again despite being a city with this reputation. And yet, it has pumped out comedians, playwrights, television writers, dancers and musicians. Hull embraces this side of its city, with movies and shows as recent as Enola Holmes 2 and The Crown being filmed here. So maybe Hull is actually a great place for this stuff and should be considered UK's Hollywood, right? Or does it even matter where someone is from? As whole, we're a very creative city, like 
there is a ton of different things to be involved with on the creative side, not least at university. Uh, what are your opinions on like, the area? Well, um, I've grown up here my entire life, so obviously I'm a little bit more attached than the average person would be. It is a little bit harder just in terms of, you know, travel and making those connections, but because of the internet and because of the way that Zoom and Discord have kind of revolutionised the way we communicate. It's getting easier. Especially from where I'm from. Two villages over is home first where they made Last of Us on the line. They do tours of like that village purely because. So I think it's less about like restricting of what you can do and just more like how well you're able to do it. I'm really proud of the journey that I've been on and I can't wait to see where the future takes me. If you're always in like a state of stasis and you think like, if you never think you improve, you might not be improving. But if you can look back and you're embarrassed at how naff a song is, probably means you've got better or a lot worse than you might realise it. I think about like my dad when he was younger and I'm like, oh, I'm quite like, whoa, that's kind of cool that I've done these things. Yeah, I'm proud, but I don't want to like rest on the laurels. I think it's important to constantly be like, I can improve on that. I can like get better at that instead of just being like, oh, I finished now. I finished art. I'm proud, but I'm not necessarily content here. Creativity can come from anywhere, and similarly can it flourish. These three teenagers have already achieved so much despite their varying backgrounds. They didn't let the past of their county define their passion's limitations, and for that, I think in a way they have already succeeded. So if there's one thing you get from this documentary, maybe we should no longer let small things like location or age hold us back, quite like these three have it. But then again, that's just my opinion. That being said, hopefully this documentary has made you think. Cool, I think I'm gonna cut it there. Thank you for having me! <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>